Oh my goodness. We are getting, this is actually a real thing. This isn't like an April Fool's joke or something. An implementation of SSL and TLS for classic Mac OS. I'm talking Mac OS 9 and Mac OS 8 and Mac OS System Software 7. I mean, we're talking, we're going retro Mac OS here, PowerPC Mac OS, going, going way back. This is awesome. And not only that, but we're also via a completely different developer getting a implementation and it's, it's in progress, but they've made a lot of progress of SDL for Mac OS classic, a seven, eight and nine, meaning that we could soon see a whole flood of ported software, tons of SDL based games, tons, tons and tons and tons of them for the classic Mac OS, but far Far more critically, in my personal opinion, is this implementation of SSL. It's called Mac SSL. It is a port of embed-tls for the classic Macintosh 7, 8, and 9. And basically, it is it is taking a an embedded version of SSL and TLS uh, and bringing it over to a version of C that can be compiled with code warrior the the classic development environment and compiler on those classic mac systems that everyone used back in the day and building it for those classic macs which means which means we could have the foundation for a modern implementation of ssh and web browsers that can actually connect over HTTPS. A any of you who have tried to use web browsers, uh, any sort of web browsers on retro computing hardware know what an absolute monstrous pain this is. Because even if a website is just pure old school HTML one and two, right? Like no CSS, no JavaScript, no nothing. Just real old school HTML with like a table or something like that. Even if it's old school, you a lot of times still can't get it to, to load on uh, just a, an old school version of a browser on say Windows 3.1 or uh, classic Mac OS or classic Amigas and the like, because those old browsers don't use modern up-to-date versions of TLS and SSL so you can't actually connect over modern HTTPS so it doesn't matter if your browser would be perfectly functional for your uses because you can't connect to the friggin websites so what we've got here is an actual implementation of modern TLS and SSL or at least semi-modern uh, so that could serve as the basis for having a nice modern SSH client, having nice modern web browsers, building applications that can interact with modern web APIs and the works. This is fantastic news. Uh, a little bit of details. Um, uh, this port, uh, according to the Mac SSL GitHub page, is based on uh, Polar SSL, which is itself a fork of Embed TLS version 2.29.9 or thereabouts. Um, it's a C library that implements the crypto primitives, the X509 certificate manipulation, and the SSL TLS protocols. Um, so the basic cipher suites, um, the signature algorithms, and the certificate handling. Now, the the, the key here. And this is really important to remember, and I'm just going to read this straight out. All of this is wrapped into support for TLS 1.1. This was enough for what I wanted to do, says the developer, but it provides a basic framework for adding TLS 1.2. Okay, so what, what this really means is that as of right now, the Mac SSL library only supports TLS 1.1, which is going to be enough to get a lot of things done. But in order to get all those modern websites working, we need to get it to TLS 1.2. The really good news here, there's TLS, uh, the current most modern version is 1.3, but most servers and websites are still using 1.2. 1.2 is the, the de facto at the moment. Um, 
The good news here is this is all based on embed, right? Embed TLS. Embed TLS has full support for TLS versions 1.2 and 1.3. It's just a matter of porting in those components, those portions over to um, uh, a version of uh, C, the C89 or C90, that, that, that revision of, of the C language, so that you can actually get it functional in Mac SSL. The framework's there. Uh, this guy's done a ton of hard work already. And uh, uh, with a little bit of extra elbow grease, that means we could have fully functional, not just TLS 1.2, but 1.3 as well huge and then of course there's the the whole matter of actually needing applications to use this <laughs> i mean don't get me wrong this isn't this isn't like an instant thing where tada we suddenly have modern web browsers on classic mac os um but uh this has been a major sticking point for some of the um some of the uh, uh, modern web browser ports for classic Mac OS systems for quite some time. Some of the rendering engines are um, in ca some cases ported or some cases viable already on classic Mac OS. There's a, a web browser that was a port of, of uh, the Firefox rendering engine called Classilla, um, which, you know, classic Mozilla, um, which had had some levels of functionality uh, working reasonably well. But part of the issue is we need modern up to date SSL and TLS in addition to all of that. And um, bringing in other web browser engines becomes increasingly easier now that we have this. And almost more importantly for me, this paves the way for a good SSH client. <laughs> oh, man, I tell you, if you had... Uh, a nice Mac OS 9 modern SSH client with a with an open SSL and TLS library so we could build um, a really great SSH clients. Oh, man, uh, that would just be truly, truly fantastic. So uh, that's that's coming along great. Uh, I love it. And the SDL library that's coming along. So uh, SDL, the simple direct media layer. This is a, a basic library that people have been using to develop video games and mostly games, but sometimes other types of applications for years, for decades now. It's very, very commonly used all over the place. Uh, people on the Linux and FreeBSD and whatnot world, you know SDL quite well. Well, there had been an SDL. Let me, let me see if I can bring this up here. There was a, a version of SDL 1.2 released for classic Macintoshes back in 1997. And that's where things have kind of sat for a very, very long time. And that's great. There was a lot of good stuff built in SDL 1.2, a lot of fun little games and the like. However, a lot has happened in the years. We now have SDL version 2. And even very recently, very recently, we have SDL version 3. But the SDL version 2 is really the critical bit because SDL v2, there are mountains of games which use SDL 2.0 for almost everything. Sound, video, input, the works. So uh, some magician sat down and started working on getting SDL 2.0 working and uh, is starting to publish it now. He says it's a work in progress and it very, very much is. I, I downloaded what was available, took a look. It's very functional, but it's missing some stuff. I'm just going to read a little bit from what he, from what he said here. Um, this is a rough draft of SDL v2 for Mac OS 9, also working on system 7.668K, which means you can run this on a 68K Macintosh running ver system software 7.6. I mean, talk about talk about retro, right? Uh, using Code Warrior Pro 6 and 7, enough was done to get it building in Code Warrior and start of the Mac OS classic video driver uh, and a start of that video driver was created for it. It does seem to basically work, but much still needs to be done. Event handling has just started and there is no audio, etc. 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 This is obviously in flux and active development. 
Um, and then he, he lists some notes and I thought some of these notes were interesting. So I'm going to read some of it to you. Getting just SDL2 itself building did take a lot of effort, but it was mostly mechanical, dealing with the foibles of Code Warrior, creating project files from scratch, things it couldn't handle. Simple things like headers missing that are standard on more modern systems, etc. The first step was doing that with all the dummy drivers, and I was a bit shocked when I got even that far. The results did absolutely nothing on the test programs with a dummy video driver that didn't even try to set up the textures, etc. So he had a dummy video driver in place, which means un under SDL, it does nothing because the video driver is kind of like the core of everything. He continues, the key missing part was a classic Mac OS video driver, which also includes event handling. I determined it was not possible to port the SDL one driver due to too many changes in the paradigms of SDL itself. Cause yeah, SDL two was a, was a big change. That's, that's why it was important to get this version available for any retro platform because it opens up the, the, the floodgates for so much software to be ported over so easily. Uh, once I'd sketched a new one out and got it hooked into the proper places, the debug output showed the test programs actually working. I then started adding basic macOS implementations. This effort uh, in uh, in source video macOS is in source video macOS classic, and he used the QNX driver for SSL2's video as a skeleton, as it was smallest and easiest to understand. Uh, also cool because QNX is a is a fun little real time real time neutrino operating system. Anyway, this is very, very cool. Uh, huge, huge kudos to the developers still working so hard to make these retro platforms viable today. It's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. I, I mean, increasingly, it gets more and more difficult to use classic Mac OS hardware as you know, it breaks and gets older. I mean, it's been so long since Apple has sold power PC, let alone 68 K versions of Macintoshes. Uh, but just the same, it's cool hardware. It's fun operating systems. You can run it in a lot of emulators really well. I, I do regularly run a power PC version of Mac OS nine in emulation on my laptop. Just cause I, I love it. It's, it's a fun system uh, and not just because I, I built so much software for it back in the day, and it's nice to be able to run that software still, um, including the the Mac OS 9 version of uh, of Microsoft Office, which I, I helped build. Uh, so it's just nice to be able to fire those things up. Um, anyway, uh, thank you to all the guys who are, who are building this. Uh, it's very, very cool. I'm excited to see what gets built on top of this as the SDL matures, as the Mac SSL adds 1.2 TLS 1.2 support. I'm excited to see what applications get hooked into that so that they can use that modern SSL and TLS. That's oh man, that's the holy grail of making a retro computing platform really viable. Uh, this, these really are two of the most critical foundational bits of 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 code of libraries out there that if you can get these on onto a retro platform in a reasonably performant way it just the floodgates open man uh the things that you can port the games the 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 communications utilities the works can come to that platform it's phenomenal absolutely phenomenal uh thank you to the lunduk journal subscribers for allowing me to report on this absolute bit of computery joy uh go to lunduk.com and click on some things and with that ladies and gentlemen boys and girls nerds and nerdettes across the inner tubes i do declare end broadcast <laughs>